Why is seat angle so important? And how can changing the position of our saddles affect how the whole bike feels when we're sat down pedaling? Well, I hope to be able to shed some light on that very question today. There is a huge conversation going on in regards to our seat tube angles on our trail and enduro bikes. So how we ended up on seat tube angle as something to change? Well, as bikes have got longer reach, it means that we can get our weight more central by steepening the seat tube angle and it makes our seated position a bit more comfortable on those long bikes. When it moves your weight forward, not only does it position your weight closer to the front wheel, but it can also deliver more grip on the rear wheel. When we talk about seat tube angle, there are two main measurements that we discuss. There's effective and actual. Now effective is the line from the bottom bracket, the center of it, to the center of your saddle rails. And actual follows the exact angle of the metal tubing there. Now, how do these different measurements have an effect on the feel of our bike? Well, effective is in some ways a really important one because that really does change where your weight sits. But actual is a vital measurement too. People that run lots of seat posts exposed outside of the bike will find that their effective seating position is drastically affected by your actual angle. Because that means the higher our saddle is, the further it is moving backwards. Now imagine if you had a very, very slack actual seat tube angle. It would mean that your seat post would be coming really far out. So the higher you have your saddle, the slacker the effective seat tube angle is becoming. I hope that makes sense. So how do we measure this? Or how are we going to measure it today? Well, I have measured between the two extreme marks on this saddle, right in the center of the rails there, and I've positioned that right in the center of the seat post. We measure from the center of the bottom bracket, straight up through until it dissects that mark and we take a measurement. Now, a way we can drastically affect our effective seat tube is by sliding the saddle forward and back on its rails. Let's take some measurements then and find out the overall effect we can have on our seat tube angles. So what if you want to run either a slacker or steeper effective seat tube angle? What can you do? Now you might find yourself in this position due to a limitation of bike design or because you have a bike where you run a lot of seat post and it exaggerates some of those angles. Well, you can of course move it on the seat rail, but how much room do we have to play with? And what does it affect in terms of the numbers? So this is actually Blake's bike and he's got the saddle at full extension. And with the saddle in its most neutral position, he is running an effective seat tube angle of about 76 degrees. So here I have the saddle slammed as far forward as it can in its most extreme forward position. That is sitting about 77.5 degrees. So it's added a huge amount in terms of the effective. It's made it a lot, lot steeper. Let's slam it back and see what the difference is on the other end of the spectrum. There we go, so that's 75.5 in its most rearward position. So three simple readings there. In its steepest position, it was 77.5. In its most neutral position, if you could have such a thing, it is 76.5. And when this effective seat tube angle was at its slackest, thanks to slamming it back on the rails, it was 75.5. So that's really interesting. We talk a lot about frame design and people are up in arms and going crazy because a frame might have got a degree steeper in the seat tube angle but we already have a lot of use and a lot of adjustment in our saddle rails. Now, bike fit is something really, 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 really important. And I'm not telling you to slam your saddle forward on the rails like there's no tomorrow. But what I am suggesting is have an experiment. It's also really important to note that having the correct saddle height is always gonna be king to a comfortable ride. And I don't expect you to put up with pain just to be keeping up with the Joneses in terms of effective seat tube. 
if you're getting any discomfort, then trust that and change something. I personally find that having a steeper seat tube angle, it basically alleviates some of the discomfort I have when riding my bike. But if I go too steep, it gives me a different set of problems. So it's a real sweet spot and it's about getting it just right. In terms of saddle height, you wanna be riding with a slight bend in the knee. And as you can imagine, as we are affecting where the saddle position is, it will also have a consequential effect on our effective saddle height because as we're moving it more over the bottom bracket, we're effectively reducing it. So that's another thing to think about. Like I said, a slight bend in the knee and I find in my experience, it's always better to err on the side of caution. When you have your saddle a bit too high, you feel so powerful. You feel, oh, I just absolutely smash the gears. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're using your body in the best way. Now, as you can imagine, as we move our saddle position forward or back, it's going to have an effect on all of our contact points. Suddenly, a change in the saddle position can affect your comfort if you're riding clips. It can also affect things like your wrists. You'd be amazed such a small difference here could potentially be putting too much pressure on your wrists in your seated position, which is obviously no good. What I'm trying to get at is it's really important to listen to your bodies and understand that a small change in one part of the bike that affects one particular area of your body is not isolated to there. And if you changed your saddle position and then the next day you go riding and your feet hurt like never before, well, they're quite probably linked. So there we have it guys, there's over two degrees of movement just in our saddle rails alone, which is pretty cool when we're talking about progressive geometry. Now, if you wanna stick with the geometry, click down here to see the Dodsters Geometry 101 and click down here to see how we get on when we start messing about with different offsets for our forks. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers guys.